Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. So I'm up at my neighbor lady's house. She lives back in the woods behind me. Uh, I think she's uh, 90, 90 years old or so, and her well's out. So I come back to see what uh, what we can find. Now there's several things that you can have wrong with the uh, with the well pump. Of course, you can have loss of power, or you can have loss of one leg of power. We had a storm come through here last night, but her son told me that it actually stopped before the storm. So we can probably rule out a major electrical failure. I would think like a burnout or something like that, um, an electrical shark to ground or something. So the first thing we have to do is we have to open up the pressure switch right here and uh, go back to business and check and see if we have voltage. It might have tripped the breaker. I think if I remember right, the breaker is way down in the woods on a pole all by itself. Uh, so I'm going to have to check power first and then we'll go back to business of seeing, uh, seeing what else is going on. I don't remember how many years ago, but I put this submersible pump in for a number of years back uh, and it's been working fine, but it's only a two wire pump. It's not the more expensive three wire that has the starting components like a start capacitor and then a start capacitor and a starting relay. If you have the more expensive higher starting torque motor it's actually a little bit better in a lot of respects because it's easier on the motor to start because of the higher starting torque characteristics of that motor uh, and also it gives you a couple of variables to, to troubleshoot because a lot of times capacitors go bad and a lot of times the relay goes bad and it's not the, the motor. If this has an electrical issue that's beyond power supply or a switch or a control issue, chances are it's going to be a motor issue inside the two-wire submersible pump. Let's take a look and see what we got. So first thing we have to do is get into this little uh, pressure switches cover. Your hot wire coming in should be the Romex, which is going to be the two center terminals, and then the submersible pump wire will be the waterproof wire that should be on the two outside terminals. So we should have 240 volts right there at the uh, black and white wire coming in off of the white Romex. And unfortunately we have 247 volts coming in and we have 247 volts going out to the actual submers submersible pump motor. So the only thing we can do is wait for it to come off of its internal overload they have an internal overload inside the motor and whenever it tries to start and if for whatever reason it stalls and cannot start then it'll trip that overload so what we have to do is wait for the internal overload to reset and at that particular instant we can be checking the amp draw with the clamp on ammeter through the wire going down to the motor because that will tell us right then if the um, motor is drawing locked rotor amp if it's locked up if it's not wanting to start and drawn exceptionally high amperage without rotation. Um, but another thing we can do in the meantime is I'm going to go ahead and unpower those wires going down to the motor and we're going to do an ohm test because another potential is the motor could have um, opened itself up. It could have actually opened the, uh, the windings to the motor. So we're going to go ahead and pull these wires off right here. So I'm going to have to find the disconnect so I can kill the power before I disconnect those wires. I was able to find the disconnect. It's on a um, it's on a pole about 30 yards to the south of me here. So I went ahead and there's a 100 amp breaker in it which serves their home and then there's a 30 amp breaker in that obviously has to serve this area here. So I'm just going to verify that the incoming power is dead and it is. Verify that it had the right terminals. So you're going to pull the two yellow wires off real quick. Now there's something about this test you got to know. If your overload is open, if your overload is open, it's going to read no continuity because the overload is common to both the uh, start winding and the run winding of the uh, of the motor. So what I'm doing right now is just attaching this, and I actually have zero continuity. So one of two things: either the overload is open and it's overheated, which means that It'll take no time at all to shut off because it's submerged in water. Uh, and then we can actually check and see if there is continuity through the windings of the motor or not. And because the fact that the electricity had not been shut off, this thing has been cycling on that overload time and time and time again. Every time it would come off, it would try to start and would open that overload again. And after an excessive number of times, it had, it'll have a tendency to open or cause that overload to fail. 
because for whatever reason the the motor is unable to overcome whatever the restriction is, whether it's getting weak uh, or maybe it's sucked up with uh, with a sludge or something, you know, into the impellers or whatever. I don't know. Something like that is causing it to not want to start. Okay, so the ohm reading says uh, that it is zero ohms, so. We either have to just let it cool down for a few minutes to check ohms again. And if we still have zero resistance, it'll, that means it will have had plenty of time to respond and close because, like I said, submerged in that cold water. And if it does not reset, then we have to assume that the overload internal of the, the well pump itself is bad. There is one other item that could be an issue. You can't tell until you pull it out, but you could have a wire that actually uh, work hardened and broke or actually... Uh, might have been nicked or whatever during the installation or it could have uh, created some oxidation and it could be burned in too. So there is always that possibility but you will not know that until you pull out the uh, the wire and of course as you pull the pump out and every foot of the wire comes right out with it you'll be able to inspect uh, very quickly virtually every uh, every foot of it. But if there will be a problem with the wire it's going to be right at the uh, waterproof connection point right there two feet off of the pump itself if that is what the issue is. But it's not, it's not going to reset, so the thermal overload uh, has essentially uh, quit, in my estimation. So, you know what? Uh, nothing to do but get the well rig ready, and I guess we're going to go ahead and pull us a well. Have to send them to town, you know, to see if they can get a replacement pump. And i got to get the well rig put back together, get down here, take the roof off the little shanty, and get ready to pull a well. This is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.